Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Six One Billy here. Before we start the show, I'd like to give my deepest condolences and strong wishes for the situation that's currently happening in KZN. What's up, guys? Six One Billy here, playing the field with Six, episode number one. A lot that happened over the weekend with the Gossip Football. We'll be touching on the calf performances with Orlando Pirates and as well as Sundowns. Look at that Super Sport United victory. Touch on the comments that were made by Stuart Baxter and the rest of the DSTV Premiership action that played throughout the weekend. And then I will be giving you my bit of the week. Let's get into it. That's how it goes. They keep asking about the best when they know it's me. Okay. Asking about the rest when they know it's me. Straight in, I guess. You know it's me. So let's start it off with uh, Petro de Luando going up against Mamelodi Sundowns. A great game that was. I got to be honest, of all the action that I saw over the weekend, that was my favorite game. I think it was my favorite game because of the quality that was within the game. You could just see that this was CAF Champions League, not group stages anymore, but the fact that it was a quarterfinal and that there was just so much on the line for both teams as well. And also looking at the difference in play in terms of how the both teams played. I thought Petro de Luanda, for example, in the first half had a very quick tempo and it was exactly what Rolando Mugwena said, how the game would definitely play out. And I think with Sundowns having to get that early goal with Lala K. Freak kick specialist. I think everybody who's seen him play has, seen, has been able to see that he's able to put the ball in the back net through a free kick as well. I think they were lucky to get that. But the thing is, with the quickness that Petro de Luanda brought into the game, I think Mamelo de Sanos was struggling to cope with that tempo. And I think when they look back on the game, the two goals that they conceded were through crosses. And that is something that Mamelo de Sanos hold themselves strong on and the fact that their defense is very strong. So the fact that two crosses came in and eventually they conceded from that is something that they'll find disappointing. But what, what was impressing for me with the Gaston Mamluri Sanals is the second half. You know, they able to adapt and that's what I love about, about Mamluri Sanals. If they see a team is playing too quickly, it's either they will raise up their game or at least they will try to slow down the game. And that is what they were doing as well. And they had the opportunities. I think if you look at even that Tempest one that he went past the goalkeeper and he hit the post, which was very unfortunate. But even towards the end of the game, having to get that goal with Neil Miami, you could just see that the spirit within Mamluri Sanals was not necessarily gone. And I think with Petro de Luanda, if you've done your homework on Mamluri Sanals, you have to be able to kill them off because they're such a quality side. You have to kill them off because if you only give yourself a one goal advantage and you give Mamluri Sanals the away goal and you still want to go all the way to South Africa in Gauteng and play against them, it's going to be very hard. And I agree with Ralim Gona what he said after the game when he said that there's definitely a goal in Pretoria. And I think everybody knows that there's definitely a goal. And I think he was also right when he mentioned that Jurgen Klopp told him that this was the right game to lose. Oh, you have to be able to lose the right game. And I think I agree with him when I say that was the right game to lose. And I do strongly believe that Mamelou Sanaz is still within this tie. And I think from what I saw within that game, I think Mamelou Sanaz have enough to go through. Next, let's get into Orlando Pirates. So obviously Orlando Pirates played against Simba. This was the Confederations Cup that they played. Obviously they topped their group. Simba was not able to top their group, but they met each other in Tanzania. And uh, I gotta be, I gotta have to be honest as well. When I watched this game, I think there was a lot of cautiousness. I think there was a whole lot of cautiousness from both teams. I think both of them knew what was on the line and they were not necessarily trying to go all the way out to try and score the goal because eventually that would leave both teams exposed. I think Orlando Pirates, I mean, if they have to be honest as well, there were times where you would say they were delaying, they were delaying with time and I think they were trying to see the game out. If they could leave Tanzania with a nil-nil, I think that's something that they definitely would have taken as well. And when I watched the game, the whole 90 minutes of the game, I did not think that Simba were going to be able to breach Orlando Pirates because of the way that they were set up, the way that they had players at the back with Nyauza, Nyauza and as well as Happy Gel as well. You could just see the midfield were not going necessarily forward with Tawang Munara as well. They were sitting within their positions and waiting on the counter every single time they got the ball, always trying to clear it out to Dion Hoto to make that run and have Kwame Pepra in the middle to sort of finish it off. But they were not able to get their chances. I think there was one really good save that uh, uh, Richard Ofori made, but that was how hard Orlando Pirates made it for Simba to even try get past them as well. So when you even look at the game and even the way that it went by with the gust of the penalty, that was the only way I felt Simba were going to score was it had to be a mistake 
through Orlando Pirates. It had to be a penalty. It had to be some amazing free kick per se. And that's the penalty that they got. Questionable, you know, it's, it's questionable in terms of whether it was a penalty or not. Um, VAR was not necessarily used as well, which I found very interesting as well. But um, Orlando Pirates only leave Tanzania with a 1-0 with a deficit as well. And they come back at home. And that's the thing with Orlando Pirates. They've got the capabilities with the players that they have. I also saw what was interesting as well was Temiko Sulox didn't come on. And that, for me, also showed that they were confident that we can take 1-0. We don't need to bring our star players onto the pitch to try to win the game. So it's going to come back to um, South Africa. It's going to come back to Orlando Stadium and then they'll be able to finish them off. The only thing that it might be seeing as a problem for Orlando Pirates is the fact that Dion Hoto is suspended. So without Dion Hoto, there's probably going to be someone else who's going to have to fill in. Like a Temi Kosilot, like a Zakele Lepasa might have to come on. Mbasa, Mbasa as well. Mbasa can also come in and also finish up those, those, those goals as well. So it will be very interesting in terms of how that goes. Another thing, straight after the game, Manjit uh, Ngazi, the head coach of Orlando Pirates, made comments in terms of how they've been treated in Tanzania, even describing it as inhuman, um, questioning the fact that how can Africans treat other Africans like this as well. And he was, he was very brutal. He was very honest. Um, if you ever get the chance to sort of see that clip, you'll be able to see. And he, he was also so passionate as well. And I was sort of looking at that clip and, and, and obviously we've seen, and we've seen in the past where coaches have spoken about it. I mean, you remember when Peter Msumani was at Mamlodi Sundowns and he was also speaking about the fact that in the starting years at Mamlodi Sundowns, how the, the treatment was in other countries within Africa. And I think the beautiful thing that he also mentioned was the fact that when Simba come to South Africa, we'll treat them with dignity, you know, we'll treat them with dignity. And I think that's something that is commendable for him to say it. And I have to also say, I like the fact that he voiced his opinion. I like the fact that he voiced it because also just as fans, you know, we only get to see what happens on the 90 minutes pitch, I'm on, on the pitch for 90 minutes. That's all we get to see. We don't necessarily get to see what happens outside of that. And sometimes it's good for us who are watching the game to get that clarity in terms of what is happening so that if the performance is not necessarily so great, you can be able to understand because of what the team went through. So, Manjang Nikazi, I hear you. I hear you. And big ups to you for having to say those things. Now we bring it back home to the DSTV Premiership. And uh, it was Super Sports United going up against KZ Chiefs at the FNB Stadium, a home game for KZ Chiefs as well. But I want to first look at Super Sports United and in terms of how they performed, you could just see just how happy uh, Andre Arantzo was to get that victory and how much it meant for the team. Because when you look at what happened throughout the week with the fact that Katrin Timbo had left the club as well, and also just has been happening throughout the season, you could just see what it meant for them, how they celebrated. I love the fact that how also uh, Gabuza was the leader of the team, just how he led up front as well, how he held the ball. He's a proper target man. He knows how to run at specific places. And even when you watch the game overall, they didn't have a lot of ball possession. Super Sport United, they didn't have it. It was all case achieves. But they were able to suffer. And that was nice to see in the fact that the team was suffering as a whole. They were suffering as a whole, defending for one another. And one moment of brilliance from Gampani Lungu being able to make that run down the wing and having to find Gabuza as well. I thought that was very beautiful. And from then on, they defended. And you could just see that perhaps maybe KZ Chiefs are not going to be able to get the victory. But just for what it means to the team to be able to be back within that top eight race and having to stay within that top eight, I think it will do wonders for them. And even for the spirit of the team, it just... I just look at Gabuza, for example, just the man that he is. You know, before the game had started, there was a picture of him with the Karnatsuris Paner, so. And uh, he was just so, he's a joy to be with. He's probably a great character to have within the dressing room with the young players that are there within, within the club as well. And I think he will be very helpful to the club as well, and as well as to Andre Anson in terms of the results that they get um, throughout the season, well, towards the end of the season. Another thing, so Super Sport United had that great victory, right? And strangely enough, I'm watching this victory for them. I'm happy for them, right? But on the other hand, I'm I'm not I'm sad. I'm I'm upset. And I'll tell you why I'm upset. I'm I'm upset because Sipombule is not part of those celebrations. He's not. And obviously it's been well documented throughout the couple of months, you know, 
in terms of Stan Matthews has come out to radio and he's spoken about the fact that, you know, he's come back overweight. He's not necessarily a great attitude within to have within the dressing room as well. And you look at the talent that this man is, and this guy was part of the Tokyo Olympic squad that went with the South Africa under 23. He was part of that. You know, this man is supposed to be adding to what Bafana Bafana are going to do next within the AFCON qualifiers as well. And he's not part of that. You know, I look at the I look at the Sipombule situation and I think there's three three losers in this situation. Number one, I think it's him. His career. His career is stagnating. And it's not good for him. It's not good for him. That the fact that his career is stagnating. Still so young, but it is stagnating. Number two, I think the club. The club's losing. To have a talent like that within your ranks and you can't use it because there's a dispute between him and management, they're not winning. And you know who's the last people that are losing? Us. People who watch the game. We can't see the best players. I watch the game because I want to see the best players. Every single game. So I don't mind if a player is not playing because he's suspended. He got the red card or he got the second yellow or five yellows or whatever the case may be. I don't mind if he's not playing because he's injured per se. You know, he's got a long-term injury. Maybe that, that, that's fine. But when it has to come down to issues between the player and the club, discipline perhaps, and the only thing I can do is urge Sipumbule to please get his career back on track. Because everybody needs it. The fans, Bafana, even Super Sport United as well. And I think he is upset because he was not able to get his move like Debo Kumgwena was. But what is commendable about Debo Kumgwena, he waited. You know, he waited. And you look back at that Arsenal situation years ago, they couldn't let go of Sanchez and Ozil at the same time. It would really deplete the squad. So they couldn't lose them both. So I hope that he understands and I hope that he gets his career back on track because it will do a lot of wonders for South African football. Now, let's go to Kids Chiefs. We're still sticking to the Kids Chiefs versus Super Sport game. Kids Chiefs playing at home. Another loss for them at home, not being able to get the three points as well. And I got to say, they, I, I thought Kids Chiefs played well. I thought they did enough to get the victory. But because of the fact that they were a little bit toothless up front, it just doesn't look like it was going to go in for them. I think Kamabile had a chance, Nkotsin Pilingobo had a chance, and as well as Cole Alexander had a chance, a number of chances as well, but it just seemed like the ball was not going in for them as well. So I think, and when you look at, I still stick to the fact that within the top six teams, or the, yeah, the top six teams of all of them, the Kaiser Chiefs have lost um, the most games. And I think it's something that Stuart Baxter has to also account for. And right after the game, he made comments. Of course, after the game, the fans were in the stadium. The fans voiced their opinion regarding Stuart Baxter as he was walking off. The fans were chanting, Stuart, I mean, Baxter must go. You know, they said Baxter must go. And he was asked about that. He was asked about the comments that were made from the fans. And his response was, he doesn't have a message for the fans. He doesn't. He says, if they want him to go, he will go, you know? And then he carried on to say that we dominated the game and we still lost. And the fans are saying that, and I must listen to that. And you could tell he sounded very frustrated. He sounded very, maybe disappointed with the guys to the fans having to say what they've said. Now, I asked the question in terms of, it's going to be very tricky for management now because I feel like there's two, man two messages that are coming out. Kizichi's management last week hosted a spaces, having to hear the fans out. You know, and that was the second space that they hosted, having to hear the fans out, having to sort of be one with them, having to ask them for patience, having to, you know, having that conversation between the fans to come together. And then the head coach happens to say, you know, must he listen to the fans if they're saying that? Him having to say he will walk if they want him to walk. I don't know if it's a great thing for the club that the fact that the, man, the management is trying to push one message and then the coach is trying to say, if they want me to go, I'll go. I don't think it's very helpful as well. And another thing that uh, Stuart Bex as well said that also I had to look into was the fact that he proceeded with, while he was saying that in the, in the post-match conference, is that he's the only coach to have brought success to this club in the last 20 years. 
So I went to the website to have a look at the honors that Kansas City have won throughout the years as well, which is great for the club to have put that out so that everybody's able to see the honors that they have. And I got it for you. Just hold on. So I looked it up on my phone, went into the club's website, went to go see what was there. And this is what it reads. In the last 20 years, and I've, I have ex I've excluded the years that Stuart Baxter was at the club when he was also winning as well. So I've excluded that. I've just included the parts that he was not there at. 2001-2002 season. Africa Winners Cup, Coca-Cola Cup, and the BP Top 8. 2003-2004 season. The league title and the Coca-Cola Cup. 2004-2005 season. The league title again and the Coca-Cola Cup. 2005-2006 season, the APSA Cup, 2006-2007 season, the SAA Super 8, 2007-2008 season, the Telkom Knockout, 2008-2009 uh, season, the MTN 8, 2009-2010 season, the Telkom Knockout, 2010-2011 season, the Telkom Knockout. And then, of course, 2013, Stuart came to the club. Perhaps I need a definition of what success is, because clearly the club has won and a lot more in the last 20 years without Stuart Baxter. The next one within the DSTV Premiership results, we had uh, the KZN Derby, which was Amazulu going up against Maritzburg United. Very interesting game to watch. I thought it was interesting because Brandon Tuta has gone into this game, he's gone in unbeaten, and he's already collected another three points that helps him and his side to climb up the table as well. I think what i like to see was it's something that I'd seen when he was at Swallows was the fact that the way that they were building up, there was that patience within build-up as well, which was really nice to see. And having to also bring back uh, Leclerc Majoro back into the fold, I thought that was also very nice to see. And then with Maritzburg United, I think Ernst Mendop, with the way that he has his side playing, that were a lot more direct. I think Machek as well. He sort of was playing the role Shongwane was playing. Do you remember Shongwane? The one who went to the United States. He was playing that role. So sort of having to be direct, running at fullbacks as well. The only interesting thing is, was that Amazulu obviously scored the crucial goal and the deserved goal, I would say. But when the spell of dominance went into uh, Maritzburg United's side at points, especially within the second half as well, they didn't look like scoring. At all. And you know, it's funny, I actually looked up this uh, stat as well. Is the fact that the number of goals that uh, Mertzburg United have also had throughout the season, they've not had 20 league goals. They've not had 20 league goals so far. And even with that being said, I think I look at someone like Sukuna, for example. He scores great goals. If you look at all the goals that he scored, even though let's say it's just four or five of them or three of them, he scores great goals. They're not easy goals to score, but he's not a great goal scorer and I hear that saying a lot and I think he is sort of the de definition of that he can score some really great goals but whether he can be a great goal scorer in terms of scoring frequently I don't think he can necessarily do that but because they've got Ernst Mundop within their ranks I think it I, do, I don't see them going down I think Ernst Mundop is an astute tactician as well I think he's able to sort of see out games as well and I think also what I like about him is the fact that if he's not going to win the game, he's definitely going to draw it. And I think he's been able to do that. And let's not forget, he did master that win over Mamluri Sanons as well, which is very hard to do. So I think they will definitely still stay up. For the Amazulu side with Brandon Tuta, for example, he's come in and there was obviously a lot of doubt, a lot of questions in terms of, you know, did they replace Benny McCarthy with him? But so far, so good, guys. You know, he's unbeaten. You know, he's got two league wins, six points. He's into the top eight. So... Maybe it was a good appointment. Another result within the uh, DSTV Premiership um, was Cape Town City going up against Royal AM. The battle for second place, you would say. And uh, I think the way that this game went out, I think it was the perfect result for the way it played out for Mamlodi Sundowns because they played out to a draw. And you know what that means now with that draw? With Mamlodi Sundowns' next victory within the league, it officially rules out mathematically both Cape Town City and Royal AM from winning the league or even having to postpone it because if we're being honest, I think Sundowns have won the league 
you could probably say about three months ago. But I think it was an interesting game to watch. I think it was fun to watch. When you watch both sides, it's a very open game. No one plans to sit back as well. And there were spell of, spells of dominance. I think in the first half, I would say Royal AM won that one. And especially when they got the goal as well. I think they were, despite them being open at the back, they were able to create clearer cut chances than Cape Town City. And I think what sort of hurt them the most was in the second half, they sat back. And when you sit back against the side of Cape Town City's stature with regards to Kain Silamayo, who's in the who's in the side, and as well as Osum Dudisim Danzani, who's in the side, and Odad as well is in the side as well, it's something that you don't want to do because they will always be able to capable to find goals. And they were always just throwing wave after wave after wave. And it was also great to see that the fans were just getting behind Cape Town City as well. And it's great to see the fans back i don't know about you guys but it's really really great to see the fans back and i think the draw was a fair result but the draw was the perfect result for mamelodi sundowns because with their next victory it knocks them both out and then last leaving um kids achieves mathematically possible to try stop them but even with that i think it's um sundowns title to lose now we get into bet of the week, proudly brought to you by Betway. Now this is the section where I will be handing out my bet slip. I'll be showing you guys my bet slip in terms of what I will be placing bets on throughout the week. And this week I've got four games, four games that I'm going to be placing bets on. And the game number one is Angers versus PSG. I think PSG have just been on fire. They've been able to score goals. Kylian Mbappe is scoring all the time. Messi's assisting for days. And then you've got Neymar as well throwing it in. I think that front three is actually living up to its tail with regards to league earn. Champions League, not so sure. But I would probably would say a handicap minus one for PSG and they're winning. So when I say handicap, I'm basically giving Angers one goal advantage at the start of the game. And that would mean PSG must win by two or more goals. So I'm going to say minus one and still... Uh, uh, PSG is going to win that game. The second pick that I'm going for is uh, Everton going up against Leicester. Very interesting game. Leicester just coming off a loss and as well as Everton as well. I think both teams will be hurt and wounded and they will be needing a result as well. And I'd, I'd, I can't sway in terms of who is going to win. So I'm going to go with an over 1.5 goals. So that's basically me saying there will definitely be two goals within this game. I'm not sure if there will be more than two, but there will definitely be more than two goals within this game. And then pick number three, um, Chelsea versus Arsenal. Um, I I think when you look at Arsenal, the last three games they've lost, I think the confidence has gone with, re with regards to the side in terms of having to fight for top four as well. And I just do not think they have it enough. I think having to let go of the bodies that they let go of in, in January with regards to bombing as well, I don't know if it was necessarily a good thing, but I think Chelsea are going to win this one. I think the win against Crystal Palace, them going to the final again. I mean, can you imagine how many finals Thomas Tuchel has been able to get to while he's been at Chelsea? It's been, it's been unbelievable, especially what is currently going on at the club i think i give them a lot of credit and i think they will go on to beat arsenal as well so i went with the chelsea straight win last but not least we've got liverpool going up against manchester united and anfield on the one hand you've got one guy who just scored a hat trick against norwich uh cristiano ronaldo what an incredible player that he is um i've never doubted him i don't get people who do doubt him he's just always be able to score goals but the one thing that hurts uh, Manchester United is how many chances did you guys let go for Norwich to, to score as well? And Norwich came into uh, Manchester United's backyard and were able to score two goals. And now you're going to Liverpool's side. You're going to Liverpool's house now. And I think with Liverpool having to beat Manchester City the way that they did and having to reach the final as well, I think it's just going to galvanize them. And I think they're definitely going to score a number, a number of goals. And that's bad news for Manchester United but one thing I'm going to go with is that anytime goal scorer Diego Jota to score I think I could have said Salah I could have said Mane I could have said Luis Diaz but I think Diego Jota will definitely will score now that's my bets of the week proudly brought to you by Betway now don't forget to place your bets at betway.co.za Lastly, uh, tonight in a couple of minutes time, it is the AFCON group qualifiers draw that's going to happen. And uh, guess who's part of it? It's the Betway ambassador and Bafana Bafana legend, Lucas Hadebe. And I'm wishing him all the best. Uh, hopefully he draws a good group for Bafana Bafana. I think we need it. I think we need to qualify for the next AFCON, that's for sure. But uh, good luck to him with regards to that. And uh, we've come to the end of the show. Thank you to everybody who's been tuning in. Really do appreciate it. Do not forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell just so that you're notified when the next episode airs. Until then, see you soon.